Welcome home. This is the Irish Roots Cafe where every day's a holiday and there's always room for one more. Merry Christmas, everybody. Come right this way. Have a seat with me today in the corner booth celebrating our 95th week. Sweeney, clear that floor. Katie, bar that door. Molly, put on another pot of Irish coffee. It's time we get this show on the road. We've got another full house today, and we don't have a chair to spare. I'm Michael Laughlin, your host. You can reach me on my webpage at irishroots.com anytime. Check out the written show notes on my blog. i uh, got a lot of extra theirs and a, and a lot of things you just click on, and it'll take you right to the point so uh, you don't have to scramble all these words down. It's much easier. And you can search all of our books and our videos and our podcasts right there on the home page. And we're having more of those coming up next year. I've got some plans, as usual. And we're redoing our our home page, too, to make the member area a little more feasible, uh, to work a little, a little easier. And remember that you can phone 816-256-3360 to leave your comments on my recorder. Try it. You'll like it. Among today's topics, Strahan is the name of the week. Searching for Agnew, MacDonald, Kelleher, and Geary. The Birth Index of Ireland is the book of the month. County Tyrone is the county of the day. Top baby names in Northern Ireland. Do you know what they are? Black Santa sit-out begins up, up north. And Snowtopia in County Dublin. Hey, yes, and please remember to take advantage of all five of our free podcasts uh, now, after the year, uh, first year or so, I think we're going to put, we do put some in the members area, but all five casts are free as they're coming out. So uh, take advantage of that. We got the Irish Families Worldwide podcast, which is this one. And we put this one out also in an enhanced uh, format with, that has photographs and links that you can click on while you're listening to the show. Uh, you have to have QuickTime or iTunes for that uh, one, but you can also just go to the regular old audio uh, a version of this one and that's just fine and we have the irish in america podcast that i still have to start the second season on and the irish song and recitation festival i've got four or five of those in the can ready to go i'll probably be mixing them up uh here the first of the year so you'll have some more to listen to there and of course the irish root cafe uh, videos that we've got a podcast on now those are video podcasts and we're starting out with 14 little shorts that i've had on my web page and uh just explains a little bit about what we do and where we go, what the podcasts are about, and then I'll start answering some uh, questions from everybody after we're through with those first 14. Uh, what kind of notes we got coming up this week? Well, let's see. Uh, be sure to check out our new podcast provider page on iTunes. That's where all five of our podcasts are put up there together. And it makes you easy easy to to see all five of them, and uh, that's a special page. We're really still honored to uh, to be a podcast provider uh, officially on iTunes. That's a great deal, and uh, take a listen. And if you can, go ahead and then leave us feedback on iTunes. Uh, I should be asking for that every week, but I just don't have the time or the inclination. But hey, it is good if you can click on iTunes and give us a uh, a little review, a little. Uh, uh, recommendation there on the reviews uh, on the feedback you just have to click on one of those little arrows and it opens up to the description page where it describes a podcast and and down towards the bottom half there it'll say uh, leave feedback or leave a comment and uh, sure do it there it helps and it also help ratings i think uh and we've got a link to that page that podcast provider page on the blog you just click it and go right there or you can just go to itunes and choose podcasts and uh uh, type in there, Michael Laughlin, and uh, you'll be getting it. Hey, number two, you can also come and visit me on my Irish Roots Cafe page on MySpace. That's really quite a setup. They have some really neat layouts, and uh, I'm thinking about using that more and more. But you can contact me there any time, too, and that's at myspace.com slash irishrootscafe. Uh, feel free to stop by and leave a note. Let me know what you think. Well, now it's time we're going to move right along here. Let's move on to the, uh, let's have a book of the month. Well, the book of the month this month is going to be the Birth Index of Ireland. I know a lot of people are interested in that book, and they don't, they're not exactly sure what it is. 
Uh, some people might think it's the record of every birth ever made in Ireland with everybody's names and parents and uh, sort of a, a family researcher's dream. But that's not quite what it is. But it is very helpful, so I thought I'd better explain it to people. Uh, it's, it's a special record of Irish family names that show the locations of surnames in Ireland by county. And now, although the survey was officially taken, say, around 1890, the location of Irish families were the same in most, almost all cases, all the way to from the 1800 to 1900. And really, uh, most families are traditionally located in the same counties for a couple of hundred years back. So uh, uh, keep that in mind. This might help locate your family no matter what year you're researching in if you're at a total loss. And sometimes when we're researching, we get tired and think, boy, I just can't go on. But hey, why not look and see where the majority of your family was located in Ireland in the 19th century? That might help. Might help you give you an idea where to start, or if you want to look into a bunch of books, find books on that county and start going through those indexes, uh, that sort of thing. So uh, it's just it's good for the whole the whole 19th century, really, 1800 to 1900. Uh, keep that in mind. And it has notes as to numerical strength and distribution based on information extracted from the indexes of the General Register of Office by Sir Robert E. Matheson, Barrister at Law, Register General for Ireland. And we've got a, lot, got a little bit about the book and uh, Matheson on uh, the webpage, too, so you might want to take a gander at that. Uh, that'll do it for the book of the month for the moment, and... Uh, Hey, I remember we do have that birth index on our webpage, and we've got a link to it on the blog in case you want to take a look at that and so a little bit more information. Uh, but now, you know, we've got coming up later in this uh, broadcast the top baby names in Northern Ireland. I bet you could guess one of them, but I bet you can't get, guess both of them if nobody tipped you off ahead of time. I'll tell you those in a little bit. Let's move on now to the county of the month. Uh, what county are we going to take a quick look at here? Well, it's going to be County Tyrone, Northern Ireland. But when I think of Tyrone, I always think of uh, Hugh O'Neill, Prince of Tyrone. You'll read that a lot in some of the uh, historical works. And, of course, that's up in Northern Ireland. And uh, since that's the county of the month, we also have a book on that, the County Tyrone Genealogy and Family History Notes. And they've got a link to that on our blog, too. But let's take a look. What families were most often up there? Things got torn around, torn up quite a bit in Tyrone, and family moved, families moved all over the place uh, uh, in earlier times. But in the 19th century, what were the names most common there? Well, Quinn, Mullen, Kelly, uh, Donnelly, Gallagher, McKenna, Campbell, Hughes, Wilson, McLaughlin, O'Neill, Doherty, Smith, and Hamilton. And I've got a list of those names and the variant spellings of those most popular names in Tyrone. Uh, on the blog, and it's also in my uh, book on Tyrone. Uh, now, if we take another look here, uh, what do we have? We've got uh, County Tyrone families on the Four Masters map. That's the map in the Annals of Ireland by the Four Masters, Connellan Translation. Uh, we're the only ones that publish that uh, translation, and, and we've still got a few copies of that set left. But what names were given there on that map? And that goes back a little bit further in history, and it lists uh, earls and lords and chieftains and princes. And, of course, chieftains meant they were Irish, and prince meant they were Irish. Uh, of course, sometimes the lords and earls were Irish, but that's another story. Uh, I can't read this whole list of names. There's so many names that were uh, that are on that map for Tyrone, but uh, uh, Breen and Cowell and Muscoskley. Uh, Golrick, Taggart, McGurk, uh, Crossan, Donlevy, Devaney, Edigan, Hamill, Hosey, uh, O'Lone, O'Looney, O'Mellon, O'Neill, of course, and uh, O'Quinn was a chieftain, and O'Rafferty, and uh, O'Teague, and Tumulty. Uh, those are just a few of the names. I, I listed them all on the uh, blog, so you might want to take a look at that, or maybe even one day. Hey, maybe even for the new year, get a copy of the Annals of Ireland by the Four Masters. Uh, we had a lot of interest in that. Just, uh, what was that, two weeks ago? We had a triple on that. Three folks wrote in and wanted the Annals, so that was fantastic, and it kept uh, kept us going for a while. What else do we have coming up later in this episode? Well, Snowtopia. Is that the name of a movie about uh, something that might happen? But no, it's 
It's a project that cost 100 million euros, and they say they've already collected the money. I wonder who's getting snowed for this one. Hmm. But now it's time to raise our eyes, skyward, give thanks, and ask for help. Here are today's Magnificent Seven. Number one, new member Sharon Wilson of Golita, California, searching for Kelleher and Geary in uh, Clondrohid Parish, County Cork, and Dan and Wellwood in Ross Cray, Tipperary County. Number two, new member uh, Judy Petsmeyer of Grand Ronde, Oregon, searching for the Strahan family, uh, County Antrim, Ballymena. New member Agnew Marcelli of Kennett, Pennsylvania, searching for John Agnew, who was a tailor, born around 1819 and had a sister, Eliza Jane Agnew Geddes. Now that's a name you won't forget. And uh, born 1817 in County Antrim, immigrated to Essex and Clinton Counties, New York, by way of Canada, 1840 to 1842. And number four, new member Marion Lyles of Dawsonville, Georgia. A big hello to Georgia, folks. Uh, and she's searching for McDonald's of Kildory, Cork, Ireland, and any lead on the surname Lyles. And, of course, that name, uh, she's spelling it uh, L-I-L-E-S, or he's spelling it. And uh, you can also spell it L-I-L-L-E-S, or you could also spell it L-I-S-L-E-S, if you're running into trouble in those records, remember those variant spellings of uh, surnames. And wait, wait, we have another one here, folks. It must be in the air. We've got another triple this week. Three folks uh, ordered the I Book of Irish Families Great and Small. Alan Guerin of Tullamore County, Offaly. And uh, Giselle Tellier of Biblio and Archives in Montreal, Canada. Your Irish Families book. And... Uh, Lucas Stalitz of Bloomington, Illinois, your book of Irish families uh, has shipped too. All three of those will be going out here the first of this week. And uh, we'll have a link, a little link on our page, on our blog, of course, that gives uh, more families that are searching for folks if you're interested. And uh, this all just reminds me to say thank you to all of our members because without you, these podcasts and the blog and the whole operation wouldn't be possible. So we sure do appreciate it. Well, now we're going to move on to what? The Irish Family Name of the Day. And the name today is going to be Strahan. I guess you could call it Strahan. Uh, it just depends on what part of the country you come for, from at this point. And that's in my honor of uh, J a member Judy Peachmeyer that was uh, up there in the Magnificent Seven. And uh, she's got a little information on that up there. So uh, you also look and see, you know, there's several ways to spell the name. Of course, you got the S-T-R-H-A-N, uh, S-T-R-A-H-A-N, which is the simplest. But some folks spell it Strahan with a G-H in there instead of just a simple H. And some people just make it S-T-R-A-C-H-A-N. So if there's an H in that name, you don't know what might happen. Uh, sometimes that H in the old language... Uh, the H after a letter meant that the letter before it was silent. So you wonder, why was that even there if it's just saying it has to be silent? And some people spell the name Strain, S-T-R-A-I-N. And, of course, we took that from the Master Guide to the various spellings of Irish family names. That's always helpful to give you an idea of uh, what directions the spelling of your names might have gone. And uh, if we take a look at the history name, I don't have a lot on it today, but... It's generally considered, uh, going back in time, that it's a family of the province of Ulster in Ireland, which, of course, is in the north. And uh, the spelling of strain, S-T-R-A-I-N, is found centered in County Down there in the 19th century. And uh, Strahan, with that H stuck, stuck in the middle of the name, it was a spelling in both Ulster and in Leinster at that time. And uh, one big key here is only nine births were recorded under that later spelling. So that tell you, tells you there was a few folks around, but it wasn't one of the top 100 names in Ireland, that's for sure. Uh, that might actually mean your search is a little bit easier. Not as many mistakes and duplicate names that you're going to find. And we found most of that information in the book of Irish Families, Great and Small. That's the master volume to the uh, 
Irish Families Project, which is a 34-book set that I uh, wrote and published here in the last year or two, or finished it up in the last year or two. It took, it took me 20 or 30 years to do the whole thing, um, just to let you know where that information's coming from. Now, if we take a look at the Irish Family Coats of Arms in the Irish Book of Arms, I found nothing there for Strahan or Strahan, uh, and that's okay because a lot of people don't have uh, a coat of arms associated with the family name. Uh, now we move on down. One last thing here. What do we have? Uh, the free master index search of Irish names from our uh, website. If you go to that website and you type in the name, uh, you're going to find a few references, which is always helpful. What do we find? Well, uh, of course, we found that it's in the birth index of Ireland. That's very helpful. And the Book of Irish Families, Great and Small, that we just took information from, that tells you that it's been recorded and documented. And Irish Names and Surnames by the Reverend Patrick Wolf. Uh, it's in that book, and that's a classic. And uh, it's also in our County Down Ireland Genealogy and Family History Notes book, uh, which gives you another uh, possible place to go and take a look. And then we also found a John Strahan, uh, spelled with a G-H in the middle, in the Journal of the American Irish Historical Society, Volume 26. So there are some places out there to hunt around, you can see, and that's just a first look, so I'd keep, uh, I'd keep my hopes up for that. Well, now we're going to uh, hesitate here for a minute and move on to the websites of the week, and we got four or five of them today. Well, the website this week, uh, let's take number one. We're going to help out the Strahan families uh, researching. There's the Strahan Family Genealogy Forum, and uh, that's, of course, on our uh, blog. You can click for that. And there's number two, there's the Strahan Genealogy Queries at CousinConnect.com. And number three, County Tyrone Genealogy. And, uh, boy, they've got, uh, it's at, that's at freepages.genealogy.rootsweb. And I had the link on the blog, but they have databases listed. Uh, oh, they just got a whole flock of things there they say they have to help. And that includes uh, parishes and books and church records and estates and uh, occupations and a place finder and a surname uh, set up and the tithe appointment books and trade directories and schools. So that's a good one place to look if you're uh, checking around in uh, County Tyrone. Number four. Irish baby names, the hottest new trend. And of course, on their webpage, it starts out saying the latest American given names trend is Irish. And I think we know that. And Irish names are the latest rage taking the top spot on national popularity charts and rising up out of the sea of given name choices. Well, that's right. You used to have be able to tell if a name was Irish or not, but now anybody can have that name. So you have to be... Uh, particularly observant to figure out just who is who. And that's not bad. That's the American way. Uh, boy, that's wrapping it up. That's our web pages of the month. And uh, now we're just going to move on to that final segment, which is some folks' favorite of all. And this is Curious News and Notes. Well, number one, Snowtopia the name of a planned ski resort and extreme sports center in Tyrrellstown, County Dublin, Ireland. Uh, the hunt 100 million euros to build it have already been raised, according to the spokesman, who, are, who also said that the recession that we're experiencing now would be good for business, not bad for business, and uh, made me wonder, who's snowing who? I don't know. They say that people spend more when times are hard, but you never know. Number two, more Irish stories, characters, and Irish cultures are going to appear on the silver screen in the coming year. Uh, folks like Colin Farrell, Killian Murphy, and uh, Liam Neeson are just a few of those who came back to Ireland uh, to film this year. And you can watch for all three of them in movies in uh, 2009, so there'll be some good ones. And uh, I guess they might look back and call this the golden ages of cinema in uh, Ireland. Number three, Governor Arnold Terminator Schwarzenegger met with President uh, McAleese after five or six canceled meetings. Things are sort of hot there in California, and you never know when you're going to be able to get together or who you have to talk to, but 
they finally got together at the Beverly Hills Hotel, and the Terminator accepted the invitation to come visit Ireland before his term of office ends next year. Now, you never know, depending on how things go, he may be, uh, he may be a refugee by that time. But California is such a wonderful place. I wonder if he'll be on the run come then. Well, we welcome you to Ireland, Arnie. That's just fine. Hey, number four. Well, 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 wasn't it nice of the politicians of the uh, EU to allow Ireland and Britain to continue to use the pint as the size of a drink? You know, you go into a pub and you say, ah, give me a pint or a, even a half pint, and they know what it means, and it has a special feel to it, you know, and do you think some politicians have the right to say you can't use the word pint anymore? You have to say, ah, give me a quart or give me a half gallon. That wouldn't quite be right. And it's all part of the planned uh, standardization of uh, weights and measures in the new, new Europe. But luckily, they voted that Ireland and uh, Britain could keep the pints in the pubs. And I think that was very generous of them. Just doesn't seem something right about politicians controlling it if you get a pint or not. Uh, but then again, I guess I'm just one of those old-fashioned folks. Number five, the top baby names in Northern Ireland this year. Uh, Kate, Katie for girls, and Jack for boys. And some of them are saying over there in Ireland that Jack comes from the television character of Jack Bauer on the 24 series. I don't know about that. I guess it's popular over there, too. That first season was great, and then... Uh, then it got a little extreme for me. Uh, number six, Black Santa returns to St. Anne's Cathedral as Dean McKelvey joins his eighth sit-out since the tradition was started in 1976, and apparently it's all about raising some funds for worthy causes. Uh, I don't know exactly where the term Black Santa comes from, however. I'm going to have to read up on that, or better still, uh, some of our 1,000 or better uh, listeners in Ireland why don't you email me and tell me what Black Santa means? I didn't didn't pick it up from the article. You can read more about it in the Belfast Telegraph online, and I have a link to that on my blog. Hey, that does it for the day. I do wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Remember to send me your comments by clicking on the contact link on our webpage at irisroots.com, and feel free to make your contributions uh, uh, with comments and things you know about family history or sing your song. Uh, we'll keep all these five shows going, and maybe we'll start a sixth one. You got an idea for a sixth uh, show to put out there on the airwaves? We just might do it. We might have to do it together. Uh, but leave your message and report on things in your part of the world when you call my phone recorder at 816-256-3360. And you can always Skype me at Irish Roots Cafe or get me on uh, MySpace at Irish Roots Cafe. Remember, members foot the bill so they get first priority, but we're open to all. And by the way, a big thank you to all of our members. Up, up, and away. <laughs>